Here's the place where I stayed at in Istanbul and Besiktas. Has really steep streets here. So I'm starting my journey to Syria now. I'm gonna go catch the bus to the airport, fly to Beirut, take a taxi to Damascus, and I'll stay there for two nights and three days. Today, tomorrow, and the next day, which is Saturday. And then on Saturday night, I'm gonna catch a bus to Amman, Jordan. And then at night, I'll catch a flight out. This is the bus I took to the airport. I made it now to the airport. I'm gonna go check in for my MEA flight, the Middle Eastern Airlines flight based out of Beirut. The plan was to meet up with Nina and her mom to join them on both the flight to Beirut and across the border to Damascus by taxi. By joining them, it cut down on my stress level to enter my last and final country, plus provided me with company for my journey. I was already having a good impression of Syrians by her friendly gesture. All right, we're starting our trip. <laughs> Hello. You got to the airport so early, huh? Simple airport at 6 a.m. I swear. Wow, I got here at what, 9 o'clock? Uh, you are lucky. At least Your we won't miss the flight. Well, you don't have four luggage with you. Yeah. <laughs> Where's our gate? C4. The Turkish took pride in their new airport, especially their control tower for some reason. Of course, it did look modern, so I was even impressed. Tell us the route. It's amazing. <laughs> <laughs> Airlines heading to Beirut okay. and then all the way from Beirut to Damascus in a private vehicle. Okay. And then you will show them your security clearance in the borders okay. and then you will get your visa upon arrival and you will pay for the visa and you will enter freely to Damascus. How long does it take from uh, Beirut to Damascus? It's like around four hours, hopefully. 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 Or six. <laughs> <laughs> or eight, who knows? Even eight? <laughs> While waiting, I found this nice passenger resting lounge in the Istanbul New Airport. Here is the gate to Beirut. Alright, here we go. Some passengers, like this one, carried a large black bag. It kind of looked like a garbage bag for me, but... We sat in the far back on the left side of the aircraft. It took a long time to get there, but here it was. This was MEA's magazine called Cedar Wings. Taxiing out, I saw Mahan Air from Iran. And we finally took off, leaving Istanbul en route to Beirut. Oh, there's that famous control tower that everyone likes. For lunch, they served us a sandwich with water, orange juice, tomato pickle, and the cookie. The route was only 600 miles, or about 1,000 kilometers. The flight was comfortable, service was good, and the staff were friendly. Middle East Airlines was founded in 1945, and its motto was, From Lebanon to the World. Arrival into Beirut, Lebanon. Up to 2.2 million people live in the greater Beirut metro area. It's one of the oldest cities and has been inhabited for the last 5,000 years. Beirut used to be called the Paris of the Middle East. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Beirut. The local time is 5 minutes past 1 p.m. and the outside temperature is 28 degrees Celsius. Thank you. After immigration, I never saw someone run so fast to pick up their luggage as Nina's mom. <laughs> well, she can run. <laughs> we got the luggage. Alright, so we made it. It's so hot. So we look for your driver? Us up to the borders. There it is. <laughs> He's arriving, huh? Yeah. Okay. Hey, nice Hello. to meet you. Hello. 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 Your name? Basim. Jason. There it is. Alrighty. Oops, what's happening here? Oh no biggie, we're in Lebanon now. I learned that in Lebanon, no cars with Syrian license plates could enter the airport grounds. Thus, we first had a driver with a Lebanese car pick us up and take us to a parking lot where we would switch into a Syrian car. Switch which cars? Where's McDonald's? 
Along the highway to Damascus, I saw billboards with Putin on it. We were slowly making our way to the border. Along the way, we stopped at a fruit stand to pick up a few items. They sure had authentic fruits here, all locally produced. I loved all the hanging banana bushels I saw at the fruit stand. How are you? I'm a Nice to meet you. <laughs> Do you speak English? The Arabic. Arabic. What's your name? Jason. My name is Pedro. Oh, okay. Hey, can you tell me what the name of this fruit is? This one. This was quince. It's a custard apple. After picking up some fruit, we continued on our way. We're about to cross the Syrian border now. We're really close, and so once we cross, it's only a 30 minute drive to Damascus. Here was the border to exit Lebanon, and then we drove through no man's land to the Syrian border. This sign was a famous place to stop and take photos for all the tourists. Alright, I'm entering Syria, and here we have the border. I successfully got my visa at the border, and we entered Syria. Wait, was I seeing some hitchhikers beside the road? Maybe they were just Syrians needing a ride. Welcome to Syria. So we finally made it. Huh? Yeah, welcome to Syria. Allah. Welcome. <laughs> Thank you. So that only took two and a half hours. In the Syrian borders, it was so easy. I made it to country 195. Thanks yeah. a lot. No worries. Wow, I'm that's happy. great. One more country left, and I'll be finished. Oh, a fantastic trip also with you. The first thing I saw when entering Syria were the Chinese car billboards. After the border on the road to Damascus were several checkpoints. This billboard featured an ad for cooking oil. You definitely knew you were in Syria when you saw the president's photo everywhere. The mobile telephone company from South Africa, MTN, had a big presence in Syria. Welcome to Damascus. Welcome to Syria! Thank you so much. The first thing I noticed were these big apartment complexes. Schools like this one, and also shops like over here, had pictures of the current president. This was the virtual university, a type of online university in Damascus. Wow, who was this guy on the rooftop? Was he another tourist? Here was the National Museum. Syria was the only country where a taxi had its president featured on its window. The first thing I noticed were a lot of sweet and candy advertisements on billboards. It was also nice to see bicyclists among the traffic. They were definitely doing their job to reduce their carbon footprint in the world. Here was a statue I wanted to investigate later on, and there again was a candy advertisement on the side of the building. Hey, how many tourists do you think are in the country today? Around 35, 40. Oh really? Yeah. <laughs> so I'm one of them. Yes, you are. Well, I'm so lucky. <laughs> yeah, but this is not including the UN stuff. This is just pure tourists. Yes. We turned around the corner, walked by this old authentic restaurant, and then found our hotel. Is this it? Wait, yeah. I checked into my hotel and the bellman took me to my room. This elevator has one, two, three, four, five is missing. Maybe that's five. And then six and seven. It's a confusing number system. All right. <laughs> okay. Ah, two beds. Okay. Yeah. Air conditioner? Air conditioner. Beds, refrigerator, mm -hmm. freezer, and bathroom. Ah, uh, okay. Yeah, it looks good. The billman's other job was cleaning the floors. This statue was Yusuf al Azma, a chief of general staff who opposed French rule of Syria and fought in the Franco Syrian War. I made it here to Damascus. Yeah, you are here in the capital of Syria, Damascus. And what's your name? My name is Ahmad. I'm a tour guide. All so right. it's a pleasure to meet you first of all. Great. Now we are we just checked in hotel. Uh -huh. Now we are walking directly to Handicraft Market. Uh -huh. It's a good stop right now, wild sunset. Yeah. Okay. And uh, there is uh, uh, many monuments in our way. We crossed by the city center. Yeah. We will see Hijaz, okay. which is the uh, oldest train station. It was established at the beginning of 20th century. Yeah. Exactly 2902. And the handicraft market, it used to be a school for teaching uh, Holy Quran okay. and also a rest stop for caravans. Wow, that's nice. <laughs> yeah, it was built 1,555. Here's the Four Seasons Hotel. Okay. 
Sure. It's information office for all tourists. Yeah, okay. Anyone who need that information, you will come to this office and he will find the answer. <laughs> what about this market? Will we be able to visit it? Yeah, sure. This is they called it Hamidiyah Bazaar. It's yeah. uh, in, at the old part, old city. Old city, okay. Yeah. Right, yes. At the end, the Umayyad Mosque. Yeah. I arrived in Syria now, in Damascus. I met up with my tour guide. He's going to be with me for three days. And he said that Damascus is completely safe here, so no problems at all. And tourism is starting to flourish again. Today, they have 40 tourists. Uh, he's been a tour guide since 2006, and he actually studied tourism. So he's been a tour guide for 13 years. So he's real experienced. This place, they called it here, now this tuition work. Mm. Uh, it used to be school for teaching Holy Quran oh, okay. and also shelter for poor people. The key in general, it contains mosque for prayer, yeah. rooms at both sides oh, okay. for accommodation of students, yeah. and also it contains uh, oven, uh -huh. kitchen, and okay. storage. The accommodation and education and meals will be free for students. Okay. And also for passengers or oh, poor people okay. who they don't have a place. Yeah. Or they need food. They come. They came to here, mm. and they can have these services free of charge. Mm. And for travelers, uh, we will start from the right side. Okay. They made this out of glass. Okay. Yeah, so this is the glass maker. The age of this provision is six thousand years. But small pieces. Yeah. Cool like grapes. Oh, like that. Grapes. This is what they produce here. So this operation goes 24/7. There's three shifts, eight hours each. And it's 2700 uh, degrees centigrade. They make glass here, and there's two factories here in Damascus. There used to be five, but now it's down to two. Here's some of the uh, art that they have. Shukran. All right. That glass factory has a 700 year history documented, but it could even go further than that. The type of glue to be like a relief. After that, they use the best color. Mm -hmm to produce pieces like this. Uh, Either totally floral design, sometimes they add some Arabic writings, letters, yeah. uh, which is either pottery or from Holy Quran. Mm. They used to use this type of uh, products to cover the whole walls and roofs, like this dome. You think he made this top roof too? Yes, sure. Oh, okay. We visited a tailor next that made everything by hand and where I found a very unusual hat. So this has gold prints in it? Yes. Oh, wow. This hat is made from... Pure silk. Yeah. They add gold threads. Oh, okay. 12 grams. 12 grams of pure threads of gold. Yes. Okay, how much is this in Syrian pounds? 30,000 Syrian pounds. Oh, wow. So... You can bargain, but that's the yeah. usual price of this. So it's really valuable, actually. Yeah, sure. At this shop, it read, Aquí el mejor precio para español solo. I was impressed some Syrians could speak Spanish. Badgammon was a popular game amongst the Syrians, and you could find people playing badgammon everywhere. I just couldn't believe there was a Four Seasons hotel in Damascus, Syria. It just seemed so out of place. But I guess this used to be pretty famous back in the day. Trying to cross the street, I spotted a restaurant called White Chicken. That was an interesting name. I loved how you can find bicyclists always mingling with the traffic. And then I came across the most unusual named hotel, Kinda Hotel. Well, this is pretty funny, it's called Kinda Hotel. Here I found the hammam. It's the Alwar hammam. But before going into the hammam, I wanted to get a haircut first. I'm gonna get my hair cut now. <laughs> yes. Alright. So how many years has he been in this profession? 35 years. So you're a professional. Therapy is behind it. You're even your father? Oh, okay. Second generation. Yes. Okay. So it's also a good location because the hammam is across the street. So after having a haircut, uh -huh. you will go to the public bath. How many years in this shop? In this shop, four years. <laughs> yeah, wow. I liked my barber. He would even take breaks to drink coffee while cutting my hair. At the end of the haircut, he did threading on both sides. Wow. It's one of those experiences that I only had in Egypt. 
and now in Syria. Threading was a method of hair removal originating in Iran, India, Central Asia, and China. It was also used here in Syria at barber shops. A little bit painful. <laughs> <laughs> well, that was a good one. Yeah. So that's called threading. <laughs> Wow, that's a good experience. So that's what a haircut in Syria is like, huh? <laughs> Thank you. What is this one? Perfume? Yeah, it's alcohol. Alcohol. Alright, thank you. How much is the haircut? At least a thousand. One thousand? Alright. Here you go. Welcome. Thank you. Welcome. Hello, Bye-bye. Assalamu alaikum. Assalamu alaikum. All right. So now we go to Hamam. Yes, to Hamam. Bye-bye. Bye-bye, Hamam. You have to get out. Hamam, hello. Just across the street. <laughs> this Hamam, or public bath, was conveniently located so close from the barber shop. After finishing with the bath, they wrapped you up with towels, including the head. It's named uh, the Bath of Lwarb, or Rose's Bath, in English. Mm, okay. It's 800 years old, oh, wow. but they made restoration 10 years ago. Mm, okay. So you see wow. that wow. techniques wow. for uh, building the domes. Yeah. Uh, it's based on four arches, oh, okay. totally stones. With the public bath, there is a lot of traditions, mm, yeah. especially for weddings, for there is separate time for men yeah. and another time for ladies. Uh, okay. Oh, so the ladies will use the same one? Yes, the this same one, but uh, in a certain time. Different time, okay. Only women. You drink herbs. Mm, okay. Here, each place, it has its own influence. Ah, okay. <laughs> <laughs> so wow. there is, uh, maybe it's a favorite because there is a memory. Yeah, okay. I see. With my friends here right. or with my family. <laughs> So that was a great experience, the Hamam experience in Damascus. I checked out the local dentist, but they were booked. Surprisingly, they were still open at 9pm. Apparently, twice a week, they stayed open late. My guide took me out through the shopping district to take a look and look for a place to eat. We passed by many shops, and I got to take a look at daily life in Damascus. Business seemed to be going as usual, there were many people in the streets, going here and there. I felt safe walking in this area in the evening. There was no problems whatsoever. Along our walk, this kid was giving out perfume samples. This guy was trying to sell socks. And these girls were trying to go shopping. This road is a shala. Restaurants, coffee shops, clothes. I liked how the Syrian flag colors were displayed on the shop doors. Also, if you talk about apple, orange juice, mm, okay. most of them we produce it locally here. Yeah. Hey, this one's so popular, huh? Mm. That middle one. Custard apple. What did you find here? These uh, four lazy women. <laughs> they can buy zucchini, prepared only to stuff it with rice and meat and to some special type of spices and cook it directly. They really did haul out the zucchini so they could stuff them easily with rice and spices. The beans you are see, prepared too. Yeah, <laughs> everything. So the vegetables here, it contain carrots and zucchini. Mm, and, and garlic too. Yeah, sure. <laughs> <laughs> this time they called it magdus. Magdus. Which is uh, egg blanc, oh. stuffed with uh, nuts yeah. and red pepper oh, and okay. garlic. Oh, really? Uh, they have a special way to mm. prepare it and after that they put it in olive oil. Oh, wow. Next, we walked by a sampling booth for Nexip, a Syrian company similar to Nescafe. We continued further to find the falafel restaurant called Simply the Best. It definitely was the best, according to my guide Ahmed. This is the, the yellow beans. What do we order here? We order uh, two sandwiches of falafel. Mm, okay. The machine is the yeah, okay, so Syrian falafels. Yes. They also made sandwiches with potato fries inside. To know whose sandwiches was whose, they kept the receipt inside. After picking up our falafels, we walked into this nearby park to find the bench. Uh -huh, we found the seats. Here was a nice cafe across the street that looked pretty popular. It definitely was full. Hey, there's some Chinese people. I was always surprised to find Chinese in unexpected places, like Syria. Were they tourists or traders? Whispers Bar seemed like a nice place in Damascus to hang out. This was Sham Palace, a five-star hotel. This is the lobby. Mm -hmm. Five stars hotel. 
the furniture tomorrow we'll talk about it. That looks pretty nice. Rooms, conference room, wedding halls, bathroom halls. Oh, okay. Sham Palace had about 10 branches of hotels in different cities around Syria. This hotel had RT News from Russia displayed in their lobby. And of course, a picture of the president in the office. Thanks for watching and stay tuned for day two when I visit Old Damascus, stop for a tamarind drink from this vendor, and walk through the Al Hamadiyya Bazaar.